Hi, my name is Lee, Lee Gerdes. I'm founder and CEO of Brain State Technologies. Well, insomnia is when our brains don't allow us to enter into a state of sleep whereby our brains can be refreshed and therefore our bodies can be refreshed. The way that we see insomnia is simply by seeing a pattern that's not symmetrical in the brain. And if it's not symmetrical, then it, it can't be refreshed because to be refreshed, it has to meet, it has to move. And then as, as it moves, it sort of unwinds and loses some of the unnecessary things that uh, have built up, thoughts, patterns, experiences, etc. When we think about overthinking, we actually think that we're doing that. <laughs> and that's, that's really funny because we're not. Um, it doesn't matter what we're thinking about either. It's not about what we think about, and it's not about um, us or our intention. Instead, it's about the brain moving too fast. This video demonstrates trauma. And I played baseball pretty much my whole life. This young man Trent Stapley is without a doubt has a trauma player. on the football yeah, field. Yeah, I'm for T-ball. But it was on the football field where life threw him a major curveball in the form of a concussion. Uh, it was a kickoff. We were returning the ball, and I went to go block someone and bashed heads. And the only thing I remember is I hit him, and then I just kind of I started. I went to go back downfield to go run. And, and block someone and then all of a sudden it just like it's like a delayed reaction then it just all of a sudden hit and I stumbled to the ground I couldn't really balance and I just ran off the field and I went and sat on the bench that's pretty much the last thing I remember that whole night this young man had a head-to-head -head collision with another young man on a football field he's 17 years old that concussion made him fall down it made him not know who his brother was um, he had trouble remembering after that, and then for a year and a half before he received brainwave optimization, he had a number of uh, different medications and he had four therapists, but he got continually worse. When we saw the trauma, when he came into um, brainwave optimization, this is the left side of the brain here. This is the right side of the brain. And it doesn't take a um, super scientist to say, well, those don't look very symmetrical. This is very low frequency down here, and this is very high frequency here. He, he was hit on the left side of the head, on the temporal, the left side. And so when we see a trauma, which is a traumatic brain injury, we see very low frequencies that are dominant in that area there is a, a kind of a break in the synopsis or the function in that particular area, like you might have a bruise on your arm if you hit it. That's what we see here. There, it has very low frequencies, uh, which are dominant on the left compared to the right, probably 150% more. We're looking at the temporal lobes at this particular time, and when we look at higher frequencies here, we see that the higher frequencies are dominant on the right instead of the left. The right is the fight or flight side. The left is the freeze side. So when he was hit, he went into fight or flight. His brain says, you know, get out of here. <laughs> this isn't good for you. This is how he came into us. He, he did not sleep well. He was anxious, um, very anxious. His short-term memory was gone, pretty much. His grades had plummeted. He was almost an A student. He was a superior athlete. He couldn't participate in athletics, and his grades were really poor, and he, and he didn't sleep. We worked with him two sessions the first day. You can probably hear on the video when he said, well, in one day I was better than I had been in just one day. And we did nothing except 
show his brain itself and so it could retain that, that functional balance. And here is his brain at the end of the day. It's very clear. This low frequency is mostly, imbalance is mostly gone. And this high frequency imbalance is mostly gone. And he felt better. In one week he was able to resume practice. He was able to, um, he was over his depression. He was sleeping, you know, like a proverbial rock every night. And so he was refreshed when he woke. There are a lot of reasons and kinds of trauma and m many of these cause our brains to be imbalanced in a way that won't allow us to sleep very well. And many of these will cause our brains to be overactivated. And when it's overactivated, <laughs> well, we start thinking about stuff. And we think that it's the stuff we're thinking about that's causing the stress, <laughs> but it's not. It's our brain that's causing us the stress. And so what we do then when we think it's the stuff we're thinking about is, well, we'll change jobs or we'll change relationships or we'll change diet. Ooh, that's a biggie. Or we'll start an exercise program or we'll start using medication. Maybe it's self-medication, drugs or alcohol, or maybe it's, you know, some medication for a sleep med. Will it over, will it help us attain restful sleep? No. Will it knock us out some? Yeah, it will. And in time, that being knocked out will have dramatically negative effects. Well, um, when you're overtired, you get a little goofy. So uh, racers, cyclists, who go on exceedingly long races will sometimes tell you that they become a little fragmented in their thinking. They start imagining stuff. They do that because the brain doesn't have the opportunity to clear itself out. It doesn't have the opportunity to get restful sleep so it can clear itself out. Now up until about five years ago maybe, give or take, science had thought that that was a life compromising event, right? And that we should find a way to get over it effectively. But in the last five years, some of the research in science has proven that huge negative effects physically, psychologically, emotionally happen because of compromised sleep. Because if we don't sleep well, it's indicative of a brain not being very well in balance. And if a brain isn't very well in balance, we can't physically be well in balance. We can't psychologically or emotionally be well in balance either. Many kinds of pathologies now have been associated to um, the lack of ability to, for restful sleep. Um, I don't think so. Uh, heretofore, science has looked at a homeostatic model for us as physical beings. And a homeostatic model would say, your blood pressure should be, you know, 70 over 120 or something. You know, it, if you get there, well, that's a good place. Everybody should be there, and right? That's homeostasis. That's a one equaling, leveling spot. The new understanding is an allostatic model. An allostatic model means as the load goes up, the brain function goes up. As the load goes down, the brain function goes down. If it doesn't, you got a problem. You can train yourself. You can, you can go into um, a extremely rigorous physical training and you can train your body to move up and up and up as the load goes up. And so you can do more and more. You can lift more weight or you can go a longer distance, etc. You can train that, but it's not very easy to train your body to go down. And in fact, you can't train it to go down totally, relax totally, if it's out of balance. See that? It doesn't work the same. You, you got to take both of them, both sides down. First and foremost, there has to be a balance. And then, once there's a balance, 
then your brain can move based on where the load is. So you think you're sleeping or you know, you're going to try to catch a cat nap or is that helpful? Maybe a little bit. Can it make you believe that you're, you've slept? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but you're never going to be as highly functional as you would have been if you had had restful sleep. What we're starting to get, we're just starting, is that this three pound mass between our ears drives literally everything we do think, say, and experience. And so if it isn't firing well, what we do think, say, and experience isn't going to be as potentially good as it could be. Neither will we have the ability to open to uh, understand life as, it, as we might if it was firing fully in a balanced position. Back in the early 90s, it was the internet, and there was a flood of information about it, and that later became, you know, e-commerce, and today that just, everybody understands, well, yeah, I got that online, okay, <laughs> you know, that's not even, you don't ask that question anymore, I mean, you can be 90, you can be 102 like my mom, or you can be two, and you get, you get it. Well, just only 20 years ago, you wouldn't have got that. What do you mean you got it online? Was it hanging on a clothesline behind the house? <laughs> and you, what? I mean, you know, th th this, this world has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. It's going to be nothing, nothing compared to what it's going to do in the next 10 years based on this three pound mass between our ears, and that is exciting.